in a regular view app, if you want to use an outside library, then you can register it with your app by calling view.use and then put it in the new view instance. This is done directly in main.js, such as here, or indirectly through it by importing the place where it's done. However, a Nuxt app does not have a main.js. So how are we supposed to import these libraries and use them? For some, there will be a corresponding Nuxt module, which will take care of all the integration for you and make it really easy. For others, they may have special instructions for Nuxt or, in general, using it with SSR. However, for the rest, we're going to have to use Nuxt plugins. Unfortunately, those are really easy. So here's the situation where I ran into this. So we are editing the information for a video, and I want to create a published at field, which gives the date that it's published and the time that it's published at as well. I've been using Vutify, but they have a date picker and a time picker, but not a date time picker. So I have a couple choices. I could go ahead and use both of these and munge together the data, but that's a lot of tricky data processing. Or I could just use the Vutify date time picker. So that's what we're gonna do. And quickly we'll learn that we need to use Nuxt plugins in order to make it work. So we'll type yarn add Vutify date time picker and wait for it to install. Then we can try to use the component in our app. So we'll go to our app and in our video edit form, we'll go ahead and put this up at the top. And that's so we can look at it easier. We'll move it to a more appropriate place in the form once we're done. And then we will attach the video dot published at property to the V model. Now let's go take a look at it. It's not showing up. And the reason is that we have an error, unknown custom element V date time picker. That's because for this library, we're supposed to import it and then call view.use to register it with our view app. However, this is usually done in main.js or something that's included in main.js. And as we said before, there's no main.js in a Nuxt app. So what are we gonna do? That's right, we're gonna do plugins. So there are a couple steps to our plugins. So first we need to create a file and we'll do that in our plugins folder. And we'll call this one Vutify Datetime Picker.js. Seems appropriate. And then all that code that we we're supposed to put in to main.js, we'll put in here. And I don't think we need to make any modifications to it. Then we'll need to go to our nux.config and put it in our plugins array. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll find our plugins and put in our path. All right, so we followed the instructions and let's see if it works. Nope. So there's not a whole lot of information in this screen. We can see that it's something to do with the Vutify date time picker, but that's really all we can tell. Fortunately, we can go back to our plugin uh, documentation and see if there's anything we missed. So we did all this correctly, but hmm, ES6 plugins. I wonder if this is an ES6 plugin. Let's test this out and see if we can make it work using this. So we'll need to go to our build, 
hash in nux config and then paste in this transpile hash. And of course, we need to make it say beautify date time picker to match our plugin. All right, let's see if that helps. And sure enough, it does. And there are no errors, and we have this date and time selection. Excellent. So to recap this process, first you install the library that you'd like to use. Then you create a plugin file. You import view and your library and call view.use with your library. Then you go to your Nux config and you put that plugin in your plugins array. And finally, if there is a syntax error, then go ahead and put that plugin in your transpile array in the build configuration. And then you can go ahead and start using that library in your Nux app. If you're here just for advice on how to get plugins working, then congratulations, you finished the video. Go get your plugin working. Uh, thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe on your way out. If you're following our ongoing series about making this app, then we've still got a little bit left to do. All right, so we have to make sure that this is working correctly with our data. So let's go ahead and save a time and then click save and this is, seems to be working all right so far. But then we click edit here and reload, we get an error. So invalid time value. So let's investigate this. Let's go to our view inspector and look at what's in our state. And we'll go to our videos and see that published at is indeed, well, it has the form of a date, but it's actually a string. And so maybe it wants an actual date instead. So we can go to where we're loading all the videos and see that the processing happens in deserialized videos. And so we can do that here. So we can take our attributes and we can set published at as the old published at, but wrapped as a date. And that will do it for all of the videos. Then when we reload, we'll see that it's once again working. Now it's time to move the publish time to a more appropriate place. And maybe, uh, go ahead and put it at the end. Since that seems like the sort of thing you would want to decide right before hitting the publish button or the save button. All right, good, that's working. And now we'll want to make it show up in our video byline. So let's go ahead and find that in our code. And here we have published at, which is just returning a new date, our current date. So we can have it instead return this dot video because we're passing in a video as a prop and then published underscore at. And we'll see that it's updated to show the six, which is the date that we'd selected. And this will now work everywhere. And it is important to keep in mind that uh, if we don't have a published at date, then it will show December 31st, 1969. That's because that's what happens when we put in new date with a null property. And that's what we're doing in our deserialized videos. If 
there's no current published at. There are a couple ways we could deal with this. First is we could say, and this is correct by the way, that in our production app, we are only going to show the user videos where the published at time is before the current time. However, we are still going to be showing stuff to the admin, and it will be good to see how we can fix this sort of issue. All right, so we'll wrap this in an if statement. And so we're only going to be setting published at if there's already a published at. So it won't be turning null into 1969. It'll just leave null as null. And then we can go here and wrap this in an if as well. So we'll take a span and vif uh, published at, because that's a shortcut for video.published at. And that should do it. Perfect. We could even add a span with a VLS that says this video is not yet published. Perfect. And that will, of course, carry over to all the other screens because it's in a component. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to tune in next time when we're going to be adding markdown and syntax highlighting to our app.